I recently read a book that opened my eyes to a brand new way of considering pain and suffering because almost everywhere we look there's going to be a conversation about pain and suffering because let's face it being a person means you experience some degree of pain and suffering almost at every single season of your life sometimes the pain and suffering will be huge and you'll find it close to impossible to make it out of bed and if you are there trust me i feel you i empathize i know But other times the pain and suffering will just be small things or small inconveniences that make us stop and think and consider. But I read a book recently that talks about this question of pain and suffering from a brand new perspective. And I feel like just I have to share it with you guys. So before we get started, hi, welcome back or welcome to my channel for the first time. My name is Biba Shea and I'm just passionate about all things human. I believe that we need to talk more about the things that make us who we are because oftentimes things such as pain and suffering will make us feel like we are alone completely on an island when that's not true. We can all relate to each other on some degree and that's what I aim to do here whether that is to let you know you're not alone or to challenge your mind as my mind is challenged also on this journey of life. So if you're into that kind of thing, please be sure to hit the subscribe button to get continuous videos from me. So, like I said, I just recently read this book by Alain de Botton. It is called The Architecture of Happiness. Now, I picked it up because I wanted a book about architecture of happiness, right? I wanted a book that was mainly about happiness. Little did I know that the word architecture actually would be what the book was about architecture now before you go on closing this uh, video we're not going to talk about architecture because i literally know nothing about architecture well i now know a little bit more just through this book however alain de Botton is such i mean i have I'm, i'm really at a loss for words at the genius of this man i love him i consume all his content i'm a subscriber to uh the school of life where he literally brings so many thought-provoking ideas to the forefront of my brain and then i read all his books because genius i tell you genius to be able to take a concept such as architecture and frame it in a way where me, a person who has never taken a single class or read a single article about architecture ever, and then to take that concept and make it into something that really expands my mind and gets me asking, is something that is definitely worth your time. So definitely pick that book up. But in that book, he talks about pain and suffering from this brand new perspective that I I'm just not used to seeing people talk about. Usually we talk about pain and suffering in regards to, you know, getting over trauma or healing from terrible things in the past and all that stuff. But how many times were we able to pause for a second and ask ourselves what the relationship is between pain and suffering and our ability to identify and acknowledge beauty? Because pain and suffering and beauty seem like two polar opposite parts of being a person a person is able to identify beautiful things and that's why we have tastes you know in clothes and i don't know aesthetics and scenery and whatever but also a person is someone like we said who will experience pain and suffering but how many times do do, do those two things come together in an intertwined way in the same conversation well that's exactly what alain de Botton does in his book about architecture but just for the rest of this video anytime i bring in a quote from the book that talks about architecture how about we change the word architecture with the word art or the word beauty because it's the exact same thing that applies he talks about architecture and the aesthetic beauty of architecture as well as the functionality of architecture but he talks about them through this lens of beauty so if we just switch that out This will be relatable to literally all of us and it will completely transform the way that we think. So hear me out. I just want to read you the first quote, okay? He says, We may need to have made an indelible mark on our lives to have married the wrong person, pursued an unfulfilling career into middle age, or lost a loved one before architecture or art or beauty can begin to have any perceptible impact on us. 
When we speak of being moved by a building, we allude to a bittersweet feeling of contrast between the noble qualities written into a structure and the sadder, wider reality within which we know them to exist. A lump rises in our throat at the sight of beauty from an implicit knowledge that the happiness it hints at is the exception. And there's this almost melancholic undertone to not only this, you know, quote or paragraph, but also to the majority of the book. He talks about the extent of the pain one must have experienced and endured in one's life in order for architecture to truly appear as beautiful or to truly resonate with us. And the same applies to art and beauty. In order for me to be able to really appreciate beauty or really appreciate the art that's around me, whether that's in nature or the beauty in someone's eyes or the beauty in someone's character or whatever, I need to have experienced a certain degree of melancholy or grief or pain or suffering in my life. Because beauty can only be appreciated in contrast with pain and suffering and I let that you know I don't know brew in my head for a little bit and isn't that true of literally anything if you want to if you want a clear uh, view of the stars you have to go out into the desert well I'm a city girl I live here in Cairo so in order for me to see the stars I need to go out way out into the desert where there is no ambient light so that it can be pitch black around me in order for me to be able to see the stars. I cannot see the stars unless everything else is pitch black. And it really got me thinking about maybe this can be a new way through which we can appreciate appreciate or learn to approach the pain in our lives now don't get me wrong i'm not here trying to say like in the midst of after having lost someone you should be able to celebrate the fact that now you'll be able to see beauty so much clearer i'm not delusional i'm also not a sociopath like feel your pain but i also am a firm believer that two things can be true at once as we experience pain in this life as we experience suffering in this life If we allow ourselves to be so consumed by the pain and suffering that we're experiencing or by the season of extreme unknown or uncertainty or what have you, if we let ourselves be completely engulfed by that, then we will sincerely miss out on so much beauty that exists and that has the ability to exist even as we are experiencing our pain and suffering. There is a way by which we can approach the pain in our lives that respects and holds space for the pain to find its full expression while also acknowledging the beauty out there, knowing that we are not betraying our painful season by acknowledging beauty and knowing that by acknowledging beauty, we are not denying or we are not in denial of the pain that we're experiencing. But simply just to open our minds to the appreciation that sometimes we can be grateful even in the midst of a very difficult circumstance for our difficult circumstance as unnatural and counterintuitive as that may seem, knowing that it is because of this difficult trial that we are able to see beauty. I want to read you another quote from the book. It says, It is in dialogue with pain that many beautiful things acquire their value. Acquaintance with grief turns out to be one of the more unusual prerequisites of architectural appreciation. But like we said, architectural can also be beauty, appreciation of beauty in general. We might, quite aside from all other requirements, need to be a little sad before buildings or art or nature can properly touch us. And I just wanted to give you a little anecdote here because in 2021, I got a divorce and being an Egyptian Christian woman living in Egypt, this was even harder than divorce already has to be on everyone who has ever gotten a divorce. Like divorce in and of itself is such a difficult thing, but it's also even harder when you are within this extremely strict cultural uh, environment, right? 
And I remember I would go on walks as I was trying to process my experience and process the decision and all that. And I would literally catch myself losing my train of thought just because I was so distracted by how red and vibrant a flower was. I remember pausing at every perfect green leaf that I would see. I remember it was as if I was brand new. It was as if I was a baby. And now my eyes could see beauty. Because within me, all I could see was this cloud. Everything was overshadowed. Every beauty in my personal life was overshadowed by this large experience of pain and grief and trauma that I was going through. But as I was going on walks to literally process this trauma, my eyes could see beauty. And this is true. This is my true example. I also have another um, anecdote for you. In March of last year, we went to Germany because my mother got diagnosed with a very uh, aggressive form of cancer. Uh, please send prayers if you are watching this up until this point. But last year was just the thick of like, okay, what does this even mean? Oh my goodness. And now we were in Germany and it was freezing cold. I mean, I am an Egyptian girl living here in Egypt. Even our winters, we don't see snow, nothing like that. It does get cold, but nothing to be compared. And so here we are in the freezing cold Germany weather facing this monster of a reality which was that my mother was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of cancer and we now had to navigate every single day as it went by with the gloom that that entailed with just how dark and terrifying th that reality was and we were not at home we were somewhere completely foreign freezing cold and I remember one day my sister and I were walking to the hospital and it started snowing so heavily. And for a moment, we were able to just step outside our apartment on our way to the hospital and open our mouths and stare up at the, the heavens and be grateful for the snow for a moment. And I know this doesn't seem like, wow, such a big deal that there's snow because obviously so many people experience snow all the time. And this wasn't our first time of seeing snow either, by the way. But in that moment of extreme darkness, something as normal and ordinary as some snow falling from the sky was beyond magical, was a moment for us to behold, was enough beauty to get us through that day. And so when Alain de Botton in his, in his book talks about how pain and suffering as being prerequisites for appreciating beauty, I don't think anything hits home more for me. And if you are a person who has also experienced any degree of pain and suffering, especially if it was like a substantial degree of pain and suffering, this will hold true for you as well. If you can just take one moment now to just literally close your eyes and think back to a time that was by and large marked by pain, marked by suffering, marked by uncertainty. And if you can scroll through your camera roll on your phone to that season and see, notice the things you took pictures of. You saw beauty in certain moments and took certain pictures, even if that moment was extremely dark for you, even if that season was extremely uncertain and vague and terrifying for you, you were still able to find beauty even there and sometimes the pain we go through as we heal from that as the thick of the pain itself begins to become a little more diluted by more life we're able to close our eyes and see now that I've experienced this degree of pain I can appreciate beauty on a daily basis so much more because of everything that I'm going through with my mother and have been ever since last year I am now considering life considering conversations and circumstances as gifts every day as a gift 
every conversation as a gift. I am seeing the beauty in an ordinary day. Because for a while, my ordinary days were the furthest thing from beautiful. And now when I get just an average day, I'm able to be like, wow, this average day is stunning. This average day is beautiful. I want to share something, a practice that I have shared before on this channel and on the podcast uh, and on Instagram and everywhere. But I just feel like it is such an important practice for us to, to incorporate into our lives so that we are not completely overshadowed by the extent of our pain and suffering and so that we are able to have you know a practical lens or glasses that we can wear that can help us see the both and of any situation that can help us appreciate beauty even in the difficult seasons and that is my gratitude practice i started this i don't even remember how many years ago uh maybe seven years ago i started it on instagram where on a daily basis at the end of the day i would write a list of things that i was grateful for and sometimes there were the stupidest things like Oh, I'm so glad that I read this sentence in a book today. I am so glad that when I was thirsty, I found water to drink. Just very basic things. But then other days, they were pretty darn big things that I was able to like just stop and be grateful for. And even though now my practice isn't uh, as public as it once was, I don't post it on Instagram every single day, but it is a practice that I have. And it has now become the subconscious existence in my mind that even during difficult seasons, even when life is the hardest, I am able to now, because I have this like muscle memory in my mind of like noticing the good things, I'm now able to identify beauty, even in the most dire and difficult circumstances ever. We recognize beautiful things as symbols of the unblemished life we once enjoyed in the Garden of Eden. Beauty, then, is a fragment of the divine, and the sight of, the sight of it saddens by evoking our sense of loss and our yearning for the life denied us. And that just goes to show, on this human journey, we are yearning. We are constantly striving for something that is beautiful. We are striving for something that is better than this current day and age. No journalism would exist if people didn't care to make life better. No social media would exist if people didn't care to verbalize the way life is in light of the way life, the way we want life to be. Just by being human, we have, all of us, subconsciously, this image of what we believe a good life is, of what we believe a good day is, a good moment is, a good relationship is, a good friendship is, a good whatever, fill in the blanks. We have that in our subconscious on a daily basis. And therefore, when we see beauty, there is a subconscious allusion to, this reminds me of how I believe things should be. This reminds me of a reality in which everything is beautiful and peaceful. I go on a walk outside at the park and I see trees and lakes and subconsciously this reminds me of the peace that I'm currently lacking in my season of life. Just watching the, the water flow down the stream is a reminder of the peace that I am lacking. And that is not a melancholic thing, that is not a sad thing. That is a very real, very human thing to arrive at that we can hold two things to be true as, at once and that in fact, if anything, pain and suffering complement beauty and beauty complements pain and suffering. My friend, you're not alone on this journey. Life is hard, but it's also pretty darn beautiful. And the more we talk about it, the more that we are able to still our hearts and notice notice the good things even in the hardest days anyway thank you so much for watching my friend thank you for being a part of this conversation if you could please hit the subscribe button that would help me out a ton and then also watch the rest of the videos on my channel and let me know and also 
let me know your thoughts have a response and let me know what your thoughts are of this video and drop a comment below and let's uh, keep the conversation going i can't wait to see you again next time